What up guys, Miguel here from Gigatech and Asus sent over the new Asus ROG Strix Scar 16 2024 for us to quickly check out. In this video, we are doing an overview of our favorite features from the gaming laptop to keep everyone's tummy warm for our eventual review. So hold on to those seats and roll that OBB. Our review unit is in the off-black colorway and there's RGB all around to last a decade. By the restart. Our review unit is in the off-black colorway and there's RGB all around to last an entire decade. We got some RGB in the ROG logo here on the lid. We got per key RGB. Uh, for the keyboard and the evident front and back sides also feature RGB strips that all eventual users can customize through the ROG Armory Crate. And back to the lid, we still get the diagonal slit uh, design with ROG or Republic of Gamers branding all throughout the strip. And yes, the placement of the diagonal slit here is not in unison with what a central diagonal line would be so I hope that doesn't freak out all the asymmetrical design fans too much because I mean when I first discovered it it totally freaked me out but hey it still looks pretty good in general because it's most likely due to this magnetic piece here at the end that all the SCAR uh, more recent SCAR laptops feature this model comes with two in the box right over here so you could change it out for the more translucent one or the more solid carbon fiber gray one right there like you know i just did and longtime owners could possibly figure out a way to maybe 3d print even more custom ones if ever they were so inclined maybe just maybe even just plastic dip the included ones so they don't need to think about the magnets as well if you wanted like a different pop of color and maybe you could doodle on it with a marker. I don't know, but get creative. Either way, yeah, it's a strict scar thing. For port, starting on the left side, we get a DC in for charging, a 2.5G RJ45 Ethernet port, HDMI 2.1, a Thunderbolt 4 Type-C port, followed by another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, which gets support for power delivery for charging and can also still be used for display output with G-Sync, followed by a combo 3.5mm audio jack. Those two Type-C ports are an obvious favorite here in the office. Lastly, on the right side are two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports for, you know, more conventional USB uh, dongles and such. Open the laptop up and we get this nice and tactile keyboard. Let me do that again because this uh, hinge does give good tension, which allows us to open the laptop. Hold on, hold on. Let's assume this is a table. Is it one hand openable? It is. I'm gonna test it on this table just to be safe. It is one hand openable. Just wanna make that clear. There's just no table present here. <laughs> so again, opening up the laptop and we get this nice and tactile per key RGB keyboard. The trackpad is also bigger now and features a capacitive numpad users can activate by holding the numlock indicator. Does it replace a physical one in this instance? Yes, it does, but I still prefer a physical one or none at all because I'm pretty sure true number crunchers would not settle for this. It does work though. Let me pull up the calculator for you guys. At first touch, I'm not, I'm so far not a fan of the trackpad, to be honest. Maybe it just needed a little more sweat on it because it does feel a lot better now. But then again, it could just be my callous fingertips because I did come from a cold country. But I think the feel is a little off from the get-go and the software acceleration is also a little off. These can be tuned in the settings a bit. So that somewhat mitigates the vibe. And of course, people would be gaming with a mouse for the most part. So maybe it really isn't that big of an issue. The keyboard deck itself is plastic and features a nice matte texture that does attract marks from sweaty palms. 
And in regular ROG fashion, the keyboard features mappable macro keys here at the top. And yes, we do get a webcam. It's a 720p one and its resolution isn't anything to write home about. But if we've learned anything from 2020, it's nice to know that it has one. The overall look of the ROG Strix SCAR 16 2024 is fine in general, of course, and with all the RGB off, kinda like so, I do think it can still pass as business over pleasure for the most part, especially if you can get over the thick boy weight. Moving on to the super bright mini LED display, Asus calls it their ROG Nebula HDR display and this thing is awesome. I remember first testing one out from last year's ROG Zephyrus G14, and it took a week to get used to staring at a super crispy and bright display. The trade-off is amazing, almost OLED-like contrast, and superb color accuracy for creative work and appreciation. This year's Strix Scar 16 features a 16-inch Quad HD+, Anti-Glare 1, still Pantone certified, and gets 100% coverage of the DCI-P3 color gamut. It refreshes at 240Hz at a marketed 3 milliseconds response time, and it's G-Sync capable with a software MUX switch for NVIDIA Advanced Optimus. All that plus Dolby Vision HDR support. What does it all mean? It's an amazing display for playing games the way the devs intended it to be played watching high-resolution HDR movies and shows, and creating content. This awesome display is backed up with the latest Intel Core i9-14900HX CPU that features 24 cores and, and 32 threads capable of 5.8GHz clock speeds, paired with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 mobile GPU. The unit is configured with 32GB of DDR5 memory, that's two 16GB sticks, meaning two slots that can be upgraded to a total of 64GB of RAM. For storage, the unit we have comes with a 1TB PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD pre-installed, but the laptop itself gets two M.2 NVMe slots that end users can choose to upgrade or add to later on. Because... Obviously, if you're a content creator, you'd need a bunch of space for all your assets. And if you were somebody who, you know, likes to keep their mass uh, library of games uh, on board and on their system locally available, you'll probably need an additional SSD for that as well. For actual gaming performance, it's been phenomenal so far. We've played a bunch of rounds of Valorant and Tekken 8 on the Strix Scar 16 2024 at their highest graphical settings. We got 200 to 300 frames per second on average playing Valorant at the display's max resolution, with 300 to 400 frames per second on average at full HD resolution. For Tekken 8, with all graphics settings set to Ultra, we got a stable 59 frames per second all throughout playing, with occasional drops in online matches, most likely due to network errors or server errors. Powering the Asus ROG Strix Scar 16 is a 90-watt 4-cell lithium-ion battery, and if it's anything like the Zephyrus G14 from last year, this should last a good 5-8 to eight hours or more in the silent performance mode, but we'll have to figure out the numbers and benchmark scores in our future review. Again, we can charge with either of the included 330W AC or 100W Type-C chargers. The laptop also features Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Unfortunately, the Strix Scar 16 2024 doesn't feature an SD card reader, and it is on the heavier side, like I mentioned earlier. But I mean, look at all this space. You guys could have fitted a SD card reader somewhere here, but you didn't. Which would have been beneficial for content creators looking at this laptop to possibly buy. But obviously, I'm pretty sure at the end of the day, it's the gamers first and everybody else second with the Strix Scar 16 2024. So with a heavy and powerful gaming laptop also comes a hefty price at 214,995 pesos for this current configuration. So that's been it for the Asus ROG Strix Scar 16 2024. What do you guys think of this expensive, portable gaming system? Let us know in the comments section below and if you found this video informative or fun be sure to smack that like button subscribe to our youtube channel hit that bell icon so you get notified of our future uploads 
be sure to visit yukatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. And don't forget to follow us on our socials. That is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X, most betterly known as Twitter. Once again, this has been Miguel, and I will see you in the next one. So, yeah.